Hey everyone, it's Miranda. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, then hey, for the first time, why don't you subscribe? Become the newest member of the Slashed Squad. Here I review products you won't feel guilty buying and do looks you can actually recreate at home. Today I kind of have a very chill, laid back video. We are diving into the Wet n Wild Crystal Cavern collection for the first time. This is the latest limited edition collection from Wet n Wild. They have been putting these out like crazy. There have been, I think, one limited edition collection per month from the brand, which makes me a little nervous because for me, when I'm seeing that much being launched, like full collections, I'm like, how much time are they taking to like put these together? What's the quality going to be like? Are they only trying to like keep up with the trends? What's going on? So in this video, I'm going to start out with a fresh face and you'll see me applying these products to my face for the first time. It's pretty much a first impression demo and review, although I did dip in to the eyeshadows yesterday and I had swatched them before putting them on so I kind of already had an opinion in my head but we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Now the Crystal Cavern collection is clearly inspired by crystals. There are four main crystals that inspire this collection and the shades that we see in this collection. We've got white quartz that is supposed to um, channel healing. We have rose quartz to channel love, jade for prosperity, and amethyst for balance. So that's basically the theme that we have going on in this collection as well as a whole lot of shimmer. There's a lot of shimmer in this collection. So without any more jibber jabber, let's just jump in to the first impression demo and review. First off, I have eye primer on already. I'm gonna dip into one of these Crystal Cavern eyeshadow trios. Now I'm gonna be honest, I'm going into this a little bit um, already with a bad taste in my mouth just because I swatched these on my arm yesterday and they felt stiff and not very pigmented. But I'm curious to see how they'll perform on my eye with the base down that I have. And I do have a MAC paint pot on my eye, so I mean like it's a good sticky base. So I'm gonna go into Jade because these greens are just calling to me. So all of these um, trios they are all shimmer shades or satin shades. There's no mattes in them because it is supposed to be channeling that crystal aspect, kind of glowy, light catching. Usually that would irritate me because I feel like you need to have at least one matte to create a cohesive look, but I get that that's kind of the theme, so I'm not super salty about it. I'm gonna go ahead and highlight with this champagne green right here. That's pretty. I'm taking the medium moss shade and that's gonna be going all over my lid. And this is one that I had an issue with yesterday. It was just really stiff in the pan and it was hard for me to pick up color. So let's see what happens. Okay, it's already applying to my eye a little bit better than it did with just a finger swatch. So that's good to know. But it's still, mm, it's still pretty faint. Like, I feel like I really need to build this up to get it to show. Kind of a lot of layering just to get an opaque look. Am I wrong? Okay, not awful. It definitely takes some time and layering to get this shade to show up. <laughs> But once it does, it's a very pretty color. It translates on the skin pretty accurately. I think that's a really pretty green. I just wish it was a little bit softer. I don't know, it's weird because these eyeshadow formulas that Wet n Wild keeps using in their limited edition, limited edition collections, they just seem so different than the formulas that are in their um, permanent products. So it's just a little confusing. Okay, so now I'm gonna go into this dark green. I think I'm actually gonna apply this first with my finger just because I know with this type of shade where it's kind of the black with the green shimmer, brushes don't typically pick up the shimmer all that well. So I'm gonna start by just applying with my finger and then we'll blend out with a brush. Okay, not too bad. Yeah, I feel like you have to use your fingers to get that green shimmer to really translate. Otherwise, it's just gonna look like black. Neat, now I'm going to take a blending brush and just kind of diffuse that. Okay, so what I'm noticing here is that as I'm blending out this darker shade, it's taking the green hue away. 
it kind of ends up looking a lot more gray than it does green once you start blending it out. You kind of have to just use your fingers on this one because as you diffuse it, it's starting to turn a little muddy. It's just sometimes a little bit tricky when you're using your fingers because it's really easy to apply with a heavier hand than when you're building up with a brush. So here's the thing, I actually like how the eyeshadow looks right now and obviously I'm gonna add some mascara and eyeliner and whatnot. I just feel like it took a lot to get here. It took a lot of layering, took a lot of blending and blending with the fingers. For a three shadow trio, I don't feel like it should have taken this long to get it to look like this and have it accurately portray the shades in the trio. But I'm curious, please let me know in the comments below, are you willing to work with shadows to kind of get them to look right if the price is right because for $4.99, you know, not too bad. But you have to also consider it's only three shades and you're probably only gonna be able to get two to three looks max out of these trios. I guess like for me, even when I'm doing kind of bright or bold looks, I still want the shadows to be low maintenance. Like I just want them to work easily so that I can focus on, you know, the creative aspect of just putting together the looks. So, I don't know, I'm a little on the fence. Oh, you know what, I'm gonna add a little bit more of that highlight shade in my inner corner. Yeah, you know, I hate giving mixed reviews of products. I feel like it's a lot more helpful when somebody has like a clear cut, I like this or I don't like this, but it's just one of those things where I can't argue that it looks pretty, I just, I'm lazy and I like things to be easier to use. I will say that this highlight shade is pretty bomb for the inner corner though. Look at that, that's gorgeous. So let me show you all of these swatched really quickly just on my arm and then we'll move on to some of the other products in this Crystal Cavern collection. So here are the swatches of all four of the trios. Here we have Jade, which is what we just used on the lid. And yeah, this middle shade is just really hard whether or not you use your fingers or not to get to translate. I had to layer that a lot. This one is Rose Quartz, really, really pretty. Amethyst it would be my favorite, but this middle violet shade is so hard, even harder than the green to get to show up. Even with your fingers, it is just so stiff. Funny enough, White Quartz, which is probably the lightest and most neutral of all the trios, this is the easiest one to use. All of the shades are very soft and pigmented, but obviously these shades are so like meh. Like you probably have them in other palettes as like highlight or lids shades. It's literally a glittery white, a silver, and a taupe, so not super interesting. I really wish that this amethyst performed better because this would be hands down my favorite, obviously. And then Rose Quartz, there's really nothing wrong with that one. That one is also pretty uh, consistent with quality, but I just feel like these shades are not super unique. So I would give those eyeshadow trios like a solid B minus, like they look pretty. It just kind of takes a lot to get there and the quality is not consistent across the shades or the trios. I would only really pick these up if um, there was a shade that you don't really have in your collection already. Otherwise it's kind of whatever. Okay, so now we are going to go ahead and test out the face highlighter from the Crystal Cavern collection. This I'm pretty excited about. It's called Crystal High and it is a beautiful champagne shade. Oh, is this cream? So you can kind of see the shade, but as it catches the light, it completely whites out because it's so stroby. Oh my God, I'm so excited to put this on. Okay, so since it's a cream, I'm gonna go ahead and apply with my fingers again. Maybe that's kind of the whole deal with this uh, collection is that it, everything's better applied with the fingers. Wow, it's a very cushy, soft cream. Like you can put a dent in this with barely any pressure. That's a very cool formula. Oh. Oh my God. Oh, wow. Okay, so there's definitely noticeable shimmer particles in this, but it's so dense and there is enough of like the actual glowy base that it doesn't look like just shimmer. You know what I mean? Like this is giving me a beam of light. Oh my God, I can see the viewfinder and it looks kind of insane and intense, but I love it. Oh, this is gonna be a perfect night out highlighter. Okay, so 
If the eyeshadow trios were a B minus, this highlighter is like an A plus plus, went out and got extra credit. <laughs> they should have used this formula for the eyeshadows and made them cream eyeshadows. That would have really been, you know, something unique and different because this formula rocks. That is a strobe if I've ever seen one. I love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. And it does come with this like little plastic insert that keeps the cream pressed so that if you do end up kind of putting a dent in it or whatever, cause it's such a soft formula, it kind of reshapes the surface. So that's a nice touch. I mean, I'm just seeing like a big beam of light in my viewfinder, so that's pretty cool. Okay, so another part of this Crystal Cavern collection, there is a face mist. Now, it doesn't really say that this mist is supposed to set the makeup or anything. It says it is made with lavender essential oil to calm and brighten the complexion while setting and refreshing the skin. So maybe it's a setting spray. It doesn't say setting makeup or prolonging makeup, so. Eh, I just hope that it doesn't add shimmer, like it's not a shimmer setting spray. Okay. Mmm, it definitely smells good. I can smell that lavender, but it's not too overpowering. Okay, I don't feel comfortable confirming nor denying whether that face mist has shimmer in it, just because I have shimmer everywhere as it is from all of these products and applying them with my fingers. So if you've got the intel, let me know. If there is, it's very, very subtle, but it's like I already have shimmer all over my face anyway from the rest of the collection, so it's kind of hard for me to tell. Okay, so what we do have that definitely adds shimmer are these little, what is it called? Brightening rocks. So I'm definitely not gonna be applying this to my face because I don't feel like I need any more shimmer. But there's that option if you feel like you still don't have enough. All right, the last makeup items in this collection are the four lip glosses. So these are only $3.99, they're ultra shiny, and it's supposed to be um, a soft, long-lasting, comfortable wear. They come in, obviously, the four shades that represent the crystals that this whole collection is based off of. Now, as much as I love my look to match and wear the green one, I don't wanna be completely the Wicked Witch of the West. I think I'm gonna go for should I do purple? But then I'm Barney. Okay, let's go for the clear quartz one, which looks like it's just a bunch of iridescent, um, like pink and gold glitter inside the formula. Oh my God, this reminds me of like lip gloss I would wear as a kid, but elevated. It's just got so much shimmer. Okay, slightly tacky, but it's not thick and gloopy, which is nice. Wow, <laughs> that's so much shimmer. I just feel like wearing all of these products together is a little bit overwhelming. I would probably pair this lip with more of a matte eye look. It definitely screams festival to me, the lip. This Crystal Quartz one actually leans a lot more blue than it looked in the tube as far as the shimmer particles. I'm not mad at it though. I'm actually liking the glitter moment here, but like you're definitely gonna get <laughs> transfer because it's a gloss. I'm actually really surprised that I like a gloss with so much glitter in it. It just kind of seems lip smackerish to me, but I think it looks cute. So I'd actually say these lip glosses are definitely worth picking up at $3.99 before they discontinue the collection. I actually wanna swatch the purple one because I wanna see how like dramatic it is. Oh, whoa, wow. That's a lot more pigmented than I thought it would be. Oh my gosh. I love that. So it actually has a pretty decently pigmented base shade and then it's just packed with shimmer. So yeah, these I'd totally pick up. What do you think about this collection? I'm a little on the fence still because the eyeshadows just really were underwhelming, but the rest of the collection was pretty okay. I'd say the lip glosses and the highlight really saved this for me from this whole collection just being gimmicky. I'm not a huge fan of shimmer in 
most products, although I understand that there is a place and time for it, and I feel like with this lip gloss, it is kind of campy almost to me, but I could see myself wearing it to like a concert or something, or just for more of an out there look. The highlight, bam, bam, I'm gonna be wearing that a lot, definitely. I would say out of everything, you have to pick up the highlight. So yeah, leave your thoughts in the comments below and let me know out of all of these products, which one you would actually pick up or are going to pick up, or maybe you already have picked up. Thank you so much for watching. If you wanna see more of these collection reviews, definitely hit the thumbs up to let me know. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button, become the newest member of the Slashed Squad. If you've done all of that, then high five, but have you hit the bell icon so you know every time a new video goes live? Engage with this video in any way to make sure this face stays on your subscription page. I'll see you in my next one, bye.